Today, I'm going to be turning a starboard pin kit for you. Now, this is a gorgeous kit. You can see it's in gunmetal. It may not be really easy to see through this plastic bag, but you'll get a much better look when I assemble it. Um, the starboard pin kit is sold by Drop Anchor Creations, and I've decided to use a piece of my favorite wood, Scandinavian Masur Birch. This is the last piece of this that I have, but it always makes an incredible kit or an incredible pin. So today, we're going to use this Masur Birch to turn a starboard pin kit. I drew a line down the center of my blank, and I'm gonna go ahead and split it into two pieces on the bandsaw. We're gonna start with our bottom tube. We're gonna put it about an eighth of an inch from the end of the blank. And I'll put a mark right about here. It's about an eighth of an inch from the upper section of the blank. And I'll do the same with the second tube, or the cap tube. Now let's go ahead and mark our lines fully across the blank. And let's make a registration line this way so that we know this is the center of our blank. We have a registration mark that we made right down the center of our blank, and that's important because we want to use that as the entry point for the drill bit when we drill both of our blanks. These blanks are rectangular, so it's going to make kind of an odd pattern for uh, drilling that are finding the center of the blank, but you'll see it's not as bad as you might think. From there, we simply Put our punch in the center and repeat with the second blank. The shorter of the two blanks is for the cap of the pin and it requires a tube that is 12.5 millimeters in diameter. Lower blank is for the body of the pin and it requires a tube with a diameter of 10.5 millimeters we have that bit currently chucked up in our drill press. I have my tubes just temporarily setting inside of my blanks, and you'll notice that the tubes align with the registration marks. So what we want to make sure we do is insert our tubes at the proper ends of the blank. We're going to start by roughing these tubes. We like to rough the tubes because it gives the epoxy something to stick to because otherwise you have a really smooth surface and the epoxy will probably stick, but it's going to stick a lot better if you have some scarring on your tube. Now we're going to use a little bit of Play-Doh and we're going to plug the ends of our tubes so that we don't get any epoxy into the tubes. That can cause a lot of problem when we get to the turning phase or the assembly phase. I have equal parts resin and hardener on my tape. I'm just going to mix that up. We'll begin spreading it on the tubes. Remember, we're entering where we begin drilling and our registration marks helps us to remember which end of the tube that is, or which end of the blank that is. Make sure you get a very liberal amount of epoxy on your tube. You don't want any loose spots where that epoxy can let loose. And then what happens is you have a nice little blowout because your blank doesn't have any epoxy, uh, keeping the wood glued to the tube. I want to make sure that my tube goes just below the surface, not too far, 
just enough to where um, it, it, it is below the surface. You don't want any of that tube sticking above the surface of the blank because we're gonna end up facing this off and putting our pin together. We wanna be able to match these two blanks together. I'm gonna to set this aside to dry. Well, I had a pleasant surprise. I was digging around in my loft looking for something else and I found a wonderfully large chunk of Masur Birch and Friedrich is who sent that to me. Thank you so much, Friedrich. I don't know that he watches the channel any longer. I've had this for a very long time, made a number of pins out of it and it's absolutely gorgeous. I thought this is what I had left and I was nervous that I wouldn't be able to get a pin out of that, but uh, I'm very happy now. We're ready to remove the plugs, well, that one just fell out, from our wood. These Play-Doh plugs pop right out. We'll get them out of the blanks. And now we're gonna square the ends of our blanks on the uh, disc sander and we'll be ready to begin turning. When you are using one of these sanding jigs with your disc sander, it's a good idea to not only check the squareness of the table to the disc, but also the squareness of the miter to the disc. And to do that, I'm just going to use this little triangle and we'll slide it right in. And I don't see any light coming from uh, behind the square. So I feel pretty good there. Now we're going to place it onto the disc and we're going to slide our, our miter up. And it's a good thing we checked it because you can't see it in the camera, but there is maybe a 32nd of an inch gap on this end of the miter. So I need to turn it uh, counterclockwise just a hair. We'll line it up, lock it into place. I'm now very comfortable that my tool and my table are both square to my disc, and I know that I'm gonna get the best squared blanks possible. After each blank I sand, I like to take a couple of seconds and go ahead and clean up my disc and my table to prepare it for the next blank. I just take a little camel hair brush and I dust off the miter, make sure it's good and clean. Then I dust off the table. I've got this large chunk of rubber and this is an eraser. It's going to clean all of the dust out from the grit of my sandpaper. We'll just start the disc up, run it along the face of the disc, and it'll have everything spick and span in no time. Once that's complete, I've got little bits of rubber everywhere, and I just go ahead and dust those right off. I like to dust the wheel or the disc a little bit. Now she's clean and ready for the next task. This blank sanded quite nicely. It looks beautiful. A lot of color to the wood. Love the pattern. Make sure we get all the dust off of the blank. The paper towels sometimes will leave a little lint. You wanna get that completely gone before you start applying your CA finish. And do not, under any circumstances, use your finger. You don't wanna get any oil from your uh, skin on the blank. It can cause a white haze in your finish. I wanna be very careful with this blank and make sure I keep it oriented properly. This is the cap end, and this is the end that meets the body of the pin. This is where the pin will insert into. So we're going to break off these nonstick bushings, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the fingernails. 
and we'll get this back on the lathe and ready to turn. The body of our pin is even more critical to keep aligned because the lower half is like 0.46 and the upper half is like 0.5 of an inch. So they are different diameters. The cap is the same diameter on both ends. So if we mess that up, it wouldn't be a huge deal, but I am trying to keep the grain aligned. We're going to start out by pressing the cap and the clip into the back end of the pin. I'm looking for a nice spot to put it. Really, I'm thinking this is the plainest spot on the blank because all of this grain I really want to see. So I'm going to try to align it right there. Use my bushing to protect the front edge of the blank. We'll poke the cap through the clip. I'm just going to set it on here for now. We're just going to get it started and then we'll come back and align it. Finish the press. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. Now on this end of the blank, we've got the bottom of the cap and it's got a couple of rings. It's got this little thin ring, which goes on first. It's a little accent ring. And then this is a little bit of a thicker ring and that goes on second. That goes into the end of the blank. And we'll go ahead and give that a little snug into place. There we go. Cap looks really nice. Let me set it over here out of the way. I'm gonna grab the front half of our blank. Now this is the this is the narrow end. This is like 0.49. This is 0.5, maybe 1, 2. Uh, I'm gonna start by pressing the nib into the smaller end of the blank. We've got our nib section, and we've got this nice little trim ring here. And the trim ring lays on the blank like this, and the nib slides into it like that. Let me go ahead and get that pressed into place. I've already chamfered the inside of the blank or the inside of the tube. Ooh, there we go. That was a little scary. Let me tighten her up a little bit and give it one last press. All right, that looks really nice. Let me go ahead and press or remove the bushing. And we're going to do the same thing at the other end of the blank. Gonna put our ring onto the cap. Gonna press that into the pin. There we go. Ah, uh, shoot. Take a look at that. We've got a little split there. Not happy about that. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do at this point except to remake the blank. Spring goes into the cap. Refill goes into the pin, the body of the pin. We're going to thread our cap back on. Dang, I'm just upset that that split. That is such a good looking pin. Dang, that just, that's upsetting. Looks like I split it at both ends. Doesn't make sense why that happened. What a gorgeous pin. Luckily, I have a little more of this Masseur Birch, so I will get another piece and I will attempt to turn Another body for my pin because this is going to be, this is my one of my favorite woods. This is going to be a daily carry for me. I want to thank you for joining me today in the shop while I turned this pin. I love the pin. I love the wood. And I think I understand now why the lower blank split, not on one end, but on both ends. The bushings that I got with this particular kit, uh, they didn't want to fit inside of the lower tube. 
So I know that this is basically a junior gent. So I went and got some junior gent bushings. I put them in the tube. They fit perfectly. So the lower tube was for a junior gent. However, I must have needed a little bit larger size tube. And that explains why when I press the components in, they expanded the tube. You can see how that sort of, I don't know how well you can see it, but it sort of juts out right there a little bit. I think the lower tube may have been incorrect for the kit. Uh, so whenever I pressed this component in, it needed a larger tube, didn't have it, so it expanded the tube. The wood being very thin around the tube, it, it, couldn't, it couldn't expand, so it gave and cracked. I do believe that's the issue. I don't know for 100%, but that's what I'm going with right now, and I'm going to have to see if I can find a tube that fits those lower bushings so that I can return the lower half of this pin. I'd like to thank you for joining me. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening. Hello everybody, how are you doing? I wanted to come back and give you a quick follow-up. As I was editing the video for this pin, I found some footage where I started the starboard pin kit using a honeycomb blank and I blew that blank apart. Those were the original tubes that came with the kit. Knowing that the kit was similar to a Junior Gent, I grabbed a set of replacement tubes from a Junior Gent, which are 12.5 millimeters for the cap and 10.5 millimeters for the body of the pin. As it turns out, the starboard needs a 12.5 millimeter cap tube and a 2764 inch lower body tube. So what I've done is I dug up a nice little 2764 inch tube, same length as a Sierra, thank goodness, and I'm in the process of remaking the body to this pen in Masseur Birch. And you will see that video next Friday. Thank you for hanging out with me. And once again, you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Take care, everybody.